Coffee etiquette. People all over the world drink coffee and there are a few more elegant ways to drink coffee than you may have imagined. So let's start with the special coffee pots. Yes, you can make it in a glass pot and all of those wonderful things. However, this is a coffee pot and you always know it's a coffee pot because a coffee pot is tall and lean where a teapot is short and stout. You always hold the lid of the coffee pot when you're pouring. And another tip that's vital, I think, is you're going to boil your water for the coffee first. And then what I do is I put a knife into the coffee pot and pour a few inches of water onto the knife. The knife actually absorbs the heat, ensuring that your coffee pot will never break. And you do that so the coffee pot actually warms itself and then you pour out that water and then you start over with the coffee and you pour it into the pot that is already partially heated. So this is a china coffee pot. It matches my everyday set of china. We have several other versions of coffee pots. And this one is my silver coffee pot. In the previous video, we talked about a teapot being much shorter and fatter, where this is coffee. Now this one, the lid is actually attached, but you still hold the lid when you pour. Now a most unusual one in the way of coffee pots you may not have seen. I do a lot of work in the Middle East and I've had the pleasure of being gifted with this amazing Arabic coffee pot from one of the princesses in the Middle East. This lid is also attached and it comes on a tall stand about four feet tall and then it sits on that and this is made of brass. So when I arrived at my hotel in the Middle East, I was given coffee. The coffee comes in tiny little cups like this and this actually is a gold 24 karat gold trim and they will meet you and pour you the coffee into your cup. Now I don't really care for coffee, especially really strong coffee, however as a guest I am required to drink it. So I would hold it up like this, however I'm not going to show the bottom of the cup like this because that would be very rude. That's like in the Middle East and Far East you do not cross your legs so that the sole of your shoe shows because it's very rude and very dirty. So that's considered rudeness as well. So I would take my other hand and lift the cup like this holding my hand in front of the bottom of the cup. Now they will probably ask me if I want a second cup and I don't have to say no thank you. I just tip my cup like this and they know that that means I've had enough of the Arabic coffee. Now let's talk about the different types of coffee cup. In North America we see a lot of this type of coffee cup. It's a bit thinner than the traditional mugs and that makes it I think nicer to drink out of. For women I recommend you only drink in one place on the cup lip because you don't want your lipstick all the way around the cup. So it would be like this. So a tall coffee cup. This could be a tea or a coffee cup. And when you're drinking, you would leave the saucer on the table and you would bring your cup up like this not bring the two like this. And for tea or coffee, you don't put the little tiny finger, your baby finger up, that stays in here like this and tipping to the side. Now I have another beautiful coffee or tea cup, and this is my Versace China, and you'll see the Medusa head in here. This is my favorite coffee service, so I would use this frequently and for, yes, myself too. I don't have to wait till special guests show up. I'm special. And you'll notice a little gold wing here. Now there are many sizes of coffee and tea spoons. This is a short handle gold plated uh, coffee spoon and it would be balanced with the size of this cup. Where if you have something like this, the uh, the stem of the spoon is just so high, tall, long, that it's out of balance. Now what I see frequently is people will stir, 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 cling, 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 sip, and then they don't know what to do with the spoon. The spoon actually rests on the coffee, uh, the, the little plate underneath the tea or coffee service. And 
Another thing that we see frequently is when people go to put sugar in the coffee. So this could be a sugar bowl. When you take the lid off, you put it down on the table like this. You would use a spoon that is for specifically the sugar, and it might have a bowl on it like this versus a traditional sugar bowl. You put that in your cup and you stir it with your regular excuse me, with your regular uh, spoon. And I wanted to demonstrate that this is a teaspoon, but this one actually is for grapefruit. You'll notice the serrated edges around the top, so don't get mixed up when you're serving yourself or your guests. With the milk, in Europe they would have the milk or the cream heated and frothy even, where in North America the milk is often cold when it goes into a hot coffee or tea. And another option is you can have something as beautiful as this when you use your tea service, coffee service, and sometimes you'll have sugar in this type of thing. So I see a lot of this kind of thing, snap, 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 then break it in and then wriggle it all up and put it on the table. Absolutely not. Messy, noisy. You want to always calm down on the peripheral things that don't really matter and focus on things that do matter. Never turn your cup upside down when the wait staff is coming around if you don't want it and don't cover the top like this either. You could just say no thank you. Often at a big banquet I ask for tea and the chances of getting tea are very slim. I may actually end up with coffee and rather than making a fuss I just don't drink the coffee. There are many ways to elevate yourself in an elegant, beautiful, sophisticated way that showcases you as a more educated and cultured person. I'm Gloria Starr, the global image, etiquette and communication expert of choice.